Alright guys, been a long time since my last video, been really busy with the holidays and stuff. Um, also, I just got sidetracked. This week we're going to be talking, or today we're going to be talking about um, the economy uh, and how they work in RPGs, or how they should work. Also, I'm drinking tea this time, so I won't ramble about coffee. I'll just ramble about this. Anyways, on the subject matter, how does your economy work? Um, I recommend using reworking it if you don't like the current unit pricing for certain items. It's just say it's harder to get on whatever world you're working with, whether that be um, shit, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or something more like this. Dark Heresy, great book, great game made by Fantasy Flight. I believe that's right there. That's their logo. Core rulebook, this actually contains everything you need to play the game. No need to buy a separate Dungeon Master's Guide. Or anything else. Comes with everything. And an adventure. I'm going to actually be doing my next video on that. Moving on. Um, what you really want to do is make sure... You can use your own economy to avoid power creep. It's um, very manageable. Um, if you're not wanting people to get as powerful fast and you're thinking they're going to question as to why you do certain things, like why is this sword so expensive, well, if the town they're buying it in has one blacksmith and 20 people, yeah, they basically are going to make the sword just for you. Alright, so. Um, armor should probably be expensive outside of cities, um, depending on what you're doing. Um... Requisitioning stuff, if you're running them through a military, you can actually have, you can completely control their equipment through requisitions, um, especially if you make looting illegal, because then, you know, you can't really loot enemy armor, wear the enemy uniform, and wear it around and not expect to get in trouble. Um, Dark Heresy is a pretty interesting system for it, actually. Um, certain weapons um, from Chaos, the enemy, the basically, um, Demons. If you pick up if you pick up a demon's weapon, you gain corruption. Um, that's blatantly illegal. Like, you can do it in the game. It's not illegal by game rules. It's just um, from what lore I have read and how I interpret it, it's blatantly illegal. Um, I'm going to probably talk a lot about Dark Heresy because I really like that economy system more. And I'm actually about to break open the book and start talking. Now, with D&D, you've got, um, it's based off of a tens system. Every, you know, I believe it's ten coppers per silver, ten silvers per gold, ten whatever. Um, I use hundreds because it's easier for me to go, no, that's 27 silver pieces, not two silvers and seven coppers. Because I am thorough enough to make sure, no, you got paid only in gold, you have to go see a money changer and pay him the difference. You know, like, money changers do exist and you need to use them type deal. Which is why I actually pay people in gold and silver. Um, I will use different coins. You know, um, depending on where you go, maybe the coins from your home country when you travel to another will be worth more or less depending on your own economy and the actual mintage of the coins. Um, what else? You can actually... Um, one, a lot of people think of economies as boring. They really aren't, if you've ever played um, any sort of civilization game. They're extremely important. Um, that's just an example. If you take economics, you realize they're really important. Um, you don't even need to take it. I mean, look at our news today. How much of it is about the economy? That is, um, if you if you let your players get involved in the making and like forming of the economy, which they easily do as adventurers, you raid a mine cleared of kabolds that lowers the price of iron or whatever is in that mine. Um, you, I don't know, get rid of bandits on the side of the road. That should decrease the price of most traded goods that, you know, meaning when shipments get robbed, prices go up because, you know, supply and demand, it's a very basic way of explaining things. But if they stop getting robbed and you actually take the wealth from the banded camp, basically a small fortune collected for you, and redistribute it yourself, you can make a tidy profit. This is one way you can let your players make money. Um, I, I'm very much so for limiting them early on than um, once I feel they're responsible enough to handle big weapons. Um, 
I like to use a starting allowance, a gear allowance at the beginning, and you don't keep what you don't spend, but you have to also spend it on equipment. So um, no more than half of the gear allowance on one item. I usually use 100 gold for D&D, for example. So you can, I think the best you can really get is split mail for armor. Uh, yeah, you're not going to start off as a tank. It encourages people to make more use of their stats than it does just buy expensive crap. I um, very much so limit magic items. Um, also, think about what sort of status symbol it is to walk into a town wearing armor. What if you're walking into a town wearing armor and you're not a status symbol? If you're of noble blood, like a human walking in in full plate regal, like this beautiful full plate mail with a cape and everything, yeah, people are going to notice you. You're immediately going to draw attention, probably positive, but if you're a half orc walking in with a bunch of... um raggedy ass leather scraps and a you know orc ungadash however the hell you say that the two-headed axe death machine you're also going to gather attention um i'm trying to break the economy one up in different parts this is all i really again these are meant to be dm basics so i'm not getting too into detail they're also more these videos are more meant to give you an idea of what you um what you're going to want to use this for i'm not discussing um I'm not getting too into um, nitpicky, finicky um, game mechanic details because any GM can change them at his own discretion. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, this is Will Hoyt signing off. See you next time.